Welcome to Rapid Retro, a career-focused shortcast with an agile twist from Agile People Ops. Through this series, we're going to get a glimpse into the careers of leaders, founders and specialists from across the globe, using an old faithful retrospective as a backdrop for our conversations, loved, lacked and longed for. Welcome Andy Kareem, Managing Director of Think Distinct to the Rapid Retro podcast. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out to do this. Um, so I could give you a massive introduction, but actually I think it'd be great if you introduced yourself, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, sure. Well, thank you for having me. I'm delighted. All right, so yeah, Andy Curry, founder of Think Distinct. Um, Think Distinct is a, a consultancy that specializes in leadership development, organizational learning and executive coaching. I've been doing this for about 25 years. I'm particularly interested in uh, applying developmental behavioral modeling. It's a way of describing working with and changing behavior. So all things learning and development, I guess. That is amazing. And I hope as we go through the uh, retrospective that we get to um, get some nuggets out of that as well, because that's such a fascinating area. We'll jump straight into the retrospective. So we'll be following the loved, lacked and longed for kind of um, framework for that. So in terms of uh, loved, what is your proudest achievement in your career to date? Proudest achievement? Well, I think one of the things that I really appreciate uh, about the work that I do is it's a real privilege to, to work with managers and leaders. If you think about what management and leadership is, it's a way of uh, scaling intelligent, skillful behavior. So managers and leaders are, are creating an environment for other people's success. That means if, I'm, if I work successfully with leaders, then that's a massive influence throughout an organisation. So I've worked with large, org large programmes where we've taken you know, hundreds of people through programmes and I, I often think about the impact that we've, that we've had. Probably I've worked for um, tens of thousands perhaps of leaders and managers over the years and I, and I think about the privilege of that connection. If I'm honest though, the, the thing that really makes a difference for me is when one person comes up after a workshop and says, do you know what, Andy, something has changed. Maybe they're a little bit more confident. Maybe they, they're able to do something that they couldn't do before. Maybe they're able to solve a problem. And, you know, when they can, when they can tell me that, often if they come up at the end of a, a workshop, that really gets me in the feels. That, that, that makes me feel, okay, we're, we're doing something useful and kind of special here. Oh, I absolutely agree. It's that um, enabling somebody's mindset so that they're able to um, challenge somebody else positively and create space for their learning and growth. Absolutely agree with you there. Um, so we'll move into the next section being lapped. So, 25 year career there you've got a, a lot of wisdom started, started when i was four. <laughs> oh, you're a young whippersnapper at the time uh, um so with all that knowledge and all that wisdom um what would you do differently knowing what you know now yeah you, you mentioned you might ask me this and it's a struggle because there's so many things i would change um, one of the things I've been really good at over the years is making mistakes. Uh, there's so many things I would change, there's so many things I would do differently. If I was to try and capture it, capture it in a nutshell, I, I think I would try and uh, make changes sooner. I think I would, I would give things up more quickly and I, I would... Um, I, I, when you're trying to be good at something, it's really useful to be, to, you know, to lean into something and to try and commit to something and, and put in an awful lot of effort. And so I've, I've tried to get really good at things over the years. Um, but the downside to that is sometimes you can invest in what they call the sunk fallacy. That's where you should have, you should have quitted a lot sooner, but you, but you, you stay at it for too long. So... I got into personal development originally through martial arts. Um, I, I would have, if I could go back, I would give up traditional martial arts sooner 
and take up more progressive functional martial arts. I, I, I would go back and do that sooner. Um, later I got into psychology. I would give up theoretical style psychology, uh, psychology more quickly and I would take up a more functional approach. I would do that much more quickly. And there's been countless pro, uh, pro projects that I've been involved in over the years that we should have taken an assessment and thought to ourselves, right, that, that's not working. Let's, let's change our mind and pivot more quickly. Mm. And so in the past, that was something that, that, you know, in an attempt to, to do great things, you overcommit to things. And I think over more recently in my career, you know, I'm, I'm much more comfortable, like, letting things go and, and moving on where there's a, a much better way to do things. I'll move on and, and uh, you know, pursue the better approach, why not? That's, it's really interesting that you say that because it kind of speaks to that kind of broader agile mindset um, of, you know, starting small and, and moving at pace and being able to, um, yeah, quick, quickly iterate uh, as well. And that learning from failure is so important. But um, the point that you make about not falling in love with a solution, uh, that speaks to me as well. Yeah, very much. I mean, I my first degree was in engineering and I did engineering as a young man because everyone said I should get a proper job. And I was interested in martial arts and I was interested in personal development and I was reading psychology. But everyone said, get a proper job. So my first degree was in engineering and, the, and it took me four years to learn that I didn't want to be an engineer. Wow. You know, so I retrained in psychology um, and you know, the rest is history, but you know, it took me quite a long while to figure that out. And I think if something doesn't speak to your heart or if it's not working and you've put in a good effort enough to test whether it's, whether it's right or not, it's, it's better to, you know, cut while the going's good and, and move on to something more effective, I think. Absolutely. And I guess that brings us to our next point um, in, in regards to uh, what you long for. Um, so what would add more fulfillment and joy to your work life? Uh, another great question. Um, well, I, I'm enjoying doing more of these types of talk, pod, podcasts. I've, I've done a number of um, video and audio broadcasts over the years um, I, I'm, I've been asked to do more and more recently I'm really enjoying that I'm really enjoying sharing more about developments in leadership development so I think there's still a lot of old myths and mistakes that still that still propagate and I'm a, a big fan of kind of debunking uh, things that don't work so I really want to get out there and kind of share much more modern ideas of what of what leadership is really about and and how to make it work in the, the 21st century um, we're doing that through things like this podcasts and more videos and we've also got different scales of event that we're doing so kind of short bite size events and kind of larger larger programs if you've got an appetite for that so yeah i'm going to lean more into that and uh, and also exploring um, technology, for example. So we're, we're doing mm. much much more kind of virtual programs um, where we kind of hijack the. We've got some tech where we hijack the current platforms like Zoom or Microsoft Teams. We hijack it, and we can stream uh, different types of experiences uh, down the standard. Zoom and Microsoft Teams uh, platform. So we, in a sense, we hijack it, we take it over and make it a much more experiential uh, event. So that's something I'm, we're exploring more. Wow, that sounds fascinating. Um, we may need to get you back to, to speak on that, just on that alone, to be honest. I'm really interested in how, how that works. Um, you have piqued my interest because I am a little bit of a martial arts fan myself. Uh, less so doing, more so just observing through film. Uh, <laughs> um, but what, what martial art were you studying and what did you change to? So that, again, it's another good question and it says a little bit about my kind of approach to, to all my professional work as well. So. I started off in a very traditional martial art. Um, it was a, a form of karate. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I, I studied that for um, from the age of about 12 to the age of about 17. And it's a very classical style, it's designed as a very militaristic style. So it's very formal, has a lot of Zen influence. But I, I realised that it wasn't very functional. So it emphasised tradition, but wasn't so good practically. So I started training with boxers and wrestlers and you know people who are interested in a much more functional approach. I started cross training before cross training was a thing. So mixed martial arts is much more popular these days, but you know, when I was a kid, um, very few people cross trained. Um, and then as a teenager, I discovered, you'll know the actor Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was, uh, I was a big fan of Bruce Lee and he had a, a unique philosophy, Jeet Kune Do. And his idea was instead of trying to master a traditional style, the idea of martial arts was to master yourself. Mm. It wasn't about tradition, it was about creating something that was uniquely yours and, and uniquely uh, functioning for you. So I applied that in martial arts uh, through cross training and eventually I, I, that influenced very much my kind of professional approach. In the industries, the fields that I'm interested in, leadership development, management development, professional skills, training, there's a lot of bunkum, there's a lot of tradition, there's a lot of old ideas. A lot of the popular models were invented in the 60s yeah. and before. And if you kick the tires on them, if you really test them, quite often you discover they don't work very well. And if they ever did work, they're probably not that fit for the kind of modern world that we're quickly um, moving through. Mm. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I, uh, I'm very much a kind of, it's a balance between critical thinking and creativity. So in, it's a, I was saying this to a group the other day, in the UK when we use the word critique, sometimes we think of critique as like a negative thing to be critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But actually the old French, the word critique comes from the old French and it actually means to examine something, to figure out how something really works right. and, and, and then to innovate from there. And so the methodology I was talking about, behavioral modeling is ideal for that. It's a great way to describe precisely how things are working and to, to work with our behavior and to change it. And uh, so yeah, the martial arts was a big inspiration for me. And later I've applied the same kind of functional approach to, to psychology and, and uh, organizational learning. That is so interesting. Um, the, the quote came to my mind and I could be completely wrong, but is it be formless, be water, my friend? Is, is, is that the quote? The yeah, so, so Bruce Lee was talking about, and it's an older, um, I think it's Chan or, or Zen saying that, that Bruce Lee borrowed um, be, be water. So he, what he meant was rather than being fixed, so he talked about how water would take a different form if you put it in a cup or in a teapot. Mm. Um, so really you're talking about improvising. Yeah. You're talking about innovating and being agile to, to use language that you'll be very familiar with mm. to be agile in the moment rather than trying to shoehorn a tradition that was created at another time and place um much better to be more sensitive to what's happening right now to make sense and to respond appropriately rather than trying to shoehorn a, a dogma if you think about if we've got time i'll talk a little bit about leadership development and um, one of the things I, I talk about when it comes to learning leadership a lot of leadership development a lot of leadership training fails because it's based on an ideology so if you think of most leadership development Typically, there's something that sits in the background, like a favorite model or mm -hmm. a favorite theory. So it could be authentic leadership or servant leadership 
yeah. or situational leadership or transformational leadership. There's a million different leadership styles, mm. but they're really taught as a kind of ideology. So they teach it and they say, we're going to teach you this. And then they turn to the participants and ask them, ask them, how would you apply that? And then the delegates really struggle because they, they don't know how to apply it. They, they struggle to close the reality gap. So if you start with an ideology, if you start with a dogma, you have to try and figure out, well, how would I apply this in your life? Mm. The way I train leadership um, at Think Distinct is we never start with a dogma. We always start with your experience. We start with what's really happening with you. And anything that we teach you is really about helping you make sense of what's already happening to you. So there's no reality gap to close. Yeah. You've already started with your reality and then you learn material to make sense of it. Does that make sense? So rather than Absolutely. forcing an old, instead of forcing a, a leadership style onto your experience, mm. we start with your experience and you build an approach that's unique for you and unique for your situation. So that's what Think Distinct is all about. And that's what uh, our program is called the Leadership, or one of our flagship programs is called the Leadership Accelerator. Mm. And it's one of the ways we can train leadership so quickly because it's based on your reality. It's based on what's really happening to you instead yeah. of trying to learn something theoretical or vague. I, yeah, I really love that approach because it's person-centered and you're focusing on the real life challenges. Um, and you've mentioned there around the experiential learning in one of your previous answers as well. Um, so all of those things coming together, creating a really good experience um, to enable people to uh, be able to take that forward on the job as opposed to having that kind of as you say that approach that's already done to them that they then kind of replicate and you know force a, a leadership style on other people yeah as i always say when it comes to traditional training they all have the same problem and that that is it's invented by someone that's not you yeah yeah and um, so what i want to do is help you create a pro an approach for yourself um, now, it turns out there are universal challenges that many managers and leaders face. So we can accelerate that. You don't have to struggle for 10 years and, you know, never figure it out. We can help you accelerate through that by understanding the kind of universal challenges that people experience. And many managers who are just thrown in at the deep end Typically, they try and figure out a basic way of managing themselves and then they, they try and replicate that. So at the end of 10 years, they don't really have 10 years worth of experience. They really have one year's experience 10 times. So either they've, they've tried to figure it out themselves and, they, and they're just replicating the same issues for 10 years or they try and follow an ideology that doesn't fit their reality. Mm. So both of those way, both of those approaches usually stall their ability to, to learn as a leader. So one of the, the things that I really advocate is not just training leadership, but teaching people how to learn leadership. It's very difficult to learn. It's very difficult uh, to just try and shoehorn uh, an ideology into your work. Whereas if you're learning as you go, you're creating an approach that's unique for you. So you have to learn how to learn leadership. Yeah. So it's learning how to learn, essentially. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, that, yeah, that's such a, a, a multi-layered and rich answer uh, that I think will provide a lot of insight and thought for people as well. Um, so, Andy, uh, what would be your one bit of advice for anyone who's following a similar career path? Again, another good question. Uh, I guess there are two thoughts that spring to mind. So, first thing is, um, don't follow, don't follow my career path. Um, and, I, and I have a couple of ideas around that. One is, even if the stuff that I did worked, the things have changed. Mm. So, 
So again, trying to replicate something that I did 10 or 20 years ago might not be fit for purpose in, in the modern career landscape. Um, it used to be when I when I first started in work as a as a sort of young man, as it were, um, people used to think of careers as ladders. Yeah. And also you would climb up the next ladder of success. Um, that's not a great way to think about careers now. Um, it's too linear, uh, it's too hierarchical, um, and it doesn't have, again, it doesn't have the agility that we, we really need to manage our careers now. Mm. So I would strongly advocate that people think of their careers much more like um, parkour, or um, free running, they call it. Mm. You know, you know, you see these folk that almost dance with the environment. Yeah. You know, they're running over walls and, you know, it's almost like gymnastics with the environment. You need, you need something much more agile to think about your career. Um, it's not it's not so linear. You have to be much more kind of reactive. And also, you know, the pandemic gave everybody a good sense of this. You have to pivot very quickly. Yeah. You have to, um, you know, we didn't skip a beat with the pandemic because we were able to, we were already delivering online experiences, but, mm. you know, many of our clients asked us, you know, stop, stop doing this program and start doing this other one when the pandemic hit. And we were able to respond to that really quickly. Um, again, because it's all it's all about agility. So that it's the same with you when it comes to your career. You cannot manage your career in, in the in the ways that people did it traditionally. So I would say, don't follow my career. I would say, invent your own approach. And the core part of that is to work out your own value proposition. What are the unique skills that you're interested in? What are, or interested in developing? What are the qualities and abilities that are uniquely yours? And sometimes it's about combining skills together. So you've got complementary skills. So you might be the best web developer in the world and, and that's your main thing, but maybe you're also great at finance. Mm. Or maybe you're the best accountant in the world, but you also know a little bit about web development. I think it's really good to think about complementary skills and um, because again, that gives you a an ability to be more agile um, rather than coaching your whole career on a, on a very kind of narrow skill set. So work out your own value proposition and also coach your career in terms of the problems that you solve and the value you, that you create. Don't coach your career on an identity. So it's not that you're an accountant, it's that you help people think about money or solve the pro money problems. It's not that you're a, a web developer, it's you're someone that, that can help um, reach a market on a very busy online space. So couch your career in terms of problems that you solve and value that you create instead of job titles. Brilliant. Um, thank you so much for that. And you've got kind of the cogs turning in my own mind around um, when people create products it is that sense of you're not creating a product you're creating a solution to someone's problem um so yeah exactly the same kind of sentiment there um, exactly if you think of a traditional job role that is a formalization of a solution to a problem mm, yeah but as we now know that many jobs are disappearing and new jobs are being created all the time by virtue of new technology, virtual reality, AI, you know, and um, all, all sorts of changes in the industry. So many of the existing jobs um, will disappear, many new jobs will, will arrive. And again, to be agile for that, you can lean into that and embrace that instead of trying to fix yourself in something historic. Absolutely. Oh. Thank you so much for your time today, Andy, and just the wealth of knowledge, experience and wisdom that you've been able to share with us. So um, before I let you go, though, do you want to just share how people can follow you, find you, your socials, websites? Hi, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I post almost every day on LinkedIn. So you can check out Andy Curry, my, my kind of LinkedIn handles, Andy Curry, the Leadership Accelerator. So you can check that out on LinkedIn. You could go visit my website, 
um, which is all the W's thinkdistinct.co.uk and uh, yeah I'd love to hear from people I'd love if, there's, if people have got any feedback or questions please get in touch I'm always, always interested in making new connections and, and learning more about, about what you do oh that's awesome thank you so much Andy thank you very much it's been a pleasure Andy Curry of Think Distinct was such a great guest I was not expecting the martial arts conversation in the middle there but it is great when your personal and professional life can kind of merge together and carry you on your journey. Um, so I'm just going to pull out real quick some insights that I thought were really interesting and of course not too agile. So we have the agile approach to leadership development where you're bringing the reality of a situation to the room first and then applying uh, models after where it's appropriate. And you know we know these models are a little bit outdated so it's always good to have like a flexible approach to that. Also, when it comes to your individual career, thinking about it in a non-linear fashion and being ready to embrace change and pivot at any point and stacking those skills together uh, to get the most value. And when it comes to value, thinking about where you bring value, what's your value proposition? So those were the couple of highlights that I thought were really interesting. It'd be great to hear what you thought was really interesting as well if you wanna drop a comment or drop a message. I'm sure Andy would love to hear your feedback as well. So thank you so much for listening. I've been Roxy Allen and this is the Rapid Retro Podcast.